Hey, and welcome to this tutorial, the second in a three or four part series taking you through the modeling, unwrapping and texturing of this asset. Today, we will be taking the asset we modeled and UV unwrapping it. If you haven't already and you're following along, why not share your progress over on the Discord server? And if you want early access to all the videos in this series and you want to skip ahead, why not check out my Patreon? Also gain an access to the Maya files and the reference images I use if you want to follow along with those. This approach is for a high poly VFX asset workflow. For a tutorial on a more game orientated workflow, check out my video on bacon maps in Substance Painter, which goes over the high poly to low poly workflow. Also, as I've had a lot of people ask in the past, when doing a high poly to low poly workflow, only the low poly needs to be UV'd, since the high poly is used to sort of project the detail onto the low poly mesh. Cool, so let's get started. To begin with, we will just subdivide the handle once, just because right now it's a little too low res, and the shape is changing too much when we smooth. Hold shift and the right mouse button and go to smooth. Just one subdivision. And after we've done that, you can see how the shape is a lot more consistent. Cool, so now we've done that. Firstly, before starting to unwrap, it's good practice to freeze the transforms. And I like to just run a planar map from the UV menu. That way we can start afresh and ensure we won't run into problems. When UV unwrapping, I like to use a 3D cut and sew tool, which just allows for a little bit of a better and more interactive cutting experience when creating UV shells. You can get to it by going to UV, 3D cut and sew tool. So we want the handle to be as straight as possible. So with the 3D cut and sew tool, we can make two cuts at either end to allow it to unfold relatively flat. Just double click to select an entire edge loop. Next, we can cut down the middle so it can unfold and not be a tube. The nice thing with this tool is if you work in a logical way, you can see how our previous cuts now work as kind of like a blocker for the new cuts we make rather than adding an edge loop through the whole mesh. We can then make further cuts on the handle basically at every sharp edge. And we can add another cut down the middle here too for the same reason as before. Now we've done that in the UV editor, which we can get to by heading up to UV. UV editor, we can hit control plus U to unfold and then control plus L to lay out the shells. For the blade, we want to keep the shells as combined as possible. Firstly, let's just cut these little grooves out from the blade. So on both sides, just select them like so. Next, let's just go ahead and separate the end here. So cut all these hard edges here at the back, all the way around to the little triangle shapes we have here on the front. Something like that should do. Finally, let's just go ahead and cut around the length of the blade. Just around to the part which becomes flat as we want to keep both sides of the shells together. Then in the UV editor, again, we can hit Ctrl plus U to unfold and then Ctrl plus L to lay out the shells. If we just go ahead and apply the checker texture to the blade, notice how we're getting some distortion. This suggests we don't have quite enough resolution. And you can see how our shell is all bent weirdly. So what we can do is hold shift and the right mouse button, head to smooth. One subdivision should be enough. And now when we unfold, we get a much more desirable result. So I often find myself unfolding whilst I have less edges. And then afterwards, if need be, I go ahead and subdivide since it's always going to be easier to select the edges when there's less of them. Since we want them both together on one tile, what we can do now is select both parts of the knife and in the UV editor, hit Ctrl L to lay them out. Sometimes I just like to manually rotate things a bit to help the layout process. So everything is sort of orientated how I want them to be. Once we're happy, we can go ahead and just hit Ctrl L again and that should be everything. In the next video of the series, we will discuss prepping the asset for export and how to apply some textures in substance. 
It's already uploaded to my Patreon if you want to check it out and skip ahead. But with that, thanks for watching. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, hit the like and subscribe buttons. Come chat with me on the Discord and I'll see you in the next video.